Hi guys, this is Anand from Phil Life, and welcome to this introduction video of our course on futures and options. Particularly, we will be discussing about futures and options, which is one of the most feared topics in the field of finance and stock markets. Majorly, we have divided it into four parts: the level zero, which is the cash markets; level one, which is the futures market; level two, which is the call market, which is further divided into a long call that is level two point one, and level two point two, which is the short call. further we have the put section which is called as the level 3 markets wherein we have divided it to level 3.1 which is the put long put and level 3.2 which is the short put contracts so we'll be decoding all these parameters and we'll be discussing about various strategies which people can take to hedge their portfolios to manage their portfolios and how they can safeguard their portfolios in uh, volatile and choppy markets secondly we'll be discussing how people can start make money when the markets are stagnating and not moving and thirdly how people can start ranging and start making money when uh, when they are seeing that the markets will be limited within a specific uh, range for example let's say we are expecting if we are expecting the nifty to stay between a level of let's say 10200 and 11200 how can we make money from that and we'll be learning strategies wherein we can make more than 1 to 2% returns on a monthly basis by rolling over our trades and sometimes uh, trading uh, clearing our trades on a monthly basis and making more and more money so that is what we want to clear off so that will be discussed in this uh, course so that's about it and uh, signing off sidhan gol from fin life i hope you enjoy it and stay tuned to our uh, upcoming videos Hi guys welcome to this video lecture so in this lecture particularly we'll be discussing about what are futures so future is one thing which is scared people are a lot of people are scared about futures and options so in this video we'll we'll be decoding about futures and we'll be discussing what futures are so let's get started with it initially i'll just give you a brief up about cash markets so majorly cash markets are just like buying vegetables so if you uh, want to buy something or some stock you just pay in the money for example let's say uh, it is 10 dollars or 10 chf or 10 um, indian rupees so whatever it is then if you give in 100 rupees or 10 rupees or uh, your uh, country's currency you will be getting the delivery of the shares within 2 days in your dmat account so that is how you just buy cash market stocks so you you give in the money and you receive the stocks or the shares within a stipulated period of time moving further if you want to talk about the futures market what happens usually so we'll do this case by case so cash market we call it as a level 0 market so because it is like just just giving the money and buying something moving further we'll call this call the futures market as level 1 market so we are done with level 0 that is cash markets level 1 is the futures market so the futures market simply how we understand this as it is just a movement of contracts that is happening and there is no actual delivery or uh, transfer of shares in one one's account so moving further we'll talk about futures so particularly what happens is that i let's say there are two people a and b so if between these two people there is one broker let's say c so c is the broker here and a and b are two parties who are willing to get into a futures transaction so in this case what happens is a sells a tells to b that i am willing to buy let's say 100 shares of tata motors after one year from you and the current market price of the stock is let's say 200 rupees so if the current market price is 200 rupees do you think that a is willing to buy it from b so b will give same 100 rupees uh, same 100 shares of tata motors for 200 itself after one year what do you think the answer is no b will say that if i sell the shares right now at the rate of 200 rupees i will be able to invest it in fd and fetch a return of approximately 6% on my investment then why should i sell it to you at 200 rupees after one year so rather than 200 rupees i want uh firstly 12 per 12 rupees of the interest which i can gain which i'm losing out if i uh, don't sell it to you right now or any other person so 12 rupees i will be able to gain that plus i am giving you a option to buy it after 
वन ईयर सो वी आर गेटिंग इन टू दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो आई वॉन्ट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ मोर मनी दैन द इंटरेस्ट ओनली दैट इज वाई देन ओनली इट विल बिकम लिक्रिएटिव टू मी बिकॉज सिक्स परसेंट आई एम ऑलरेडी गेटिंग इन एफ डी सो आई वॉन्ट अ लिटिल मोर दैन ट्वेल्व रुपीज ऑन टू हंड्रेड रुपीज सो ए अग्रीज टू दिस एंड ए से इज ओके नो प्रॉब्लम आई विल गिव यू टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन रुपीज ओवरऑल सो दिस बिकम्स योर फ्यूचर प्राइस फॉर द टाटा मोटर वन ईयर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो ऑन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वी कैन सिंपली मैंशन Tata Motor future price of one year from today's date is, for example, today's date is one August twenty nineteen. The future price future date will be one uh, August twenty twenty. So this is the contract which is written, which says that on one August to twenty twenty, A will buy hundred shares from B at two hundred and fifteen rupees. The current market price is two hundred rupees. So this is what the contract is. particularly what is written in the contract so what happens next both the parties are bound by the contract so for the same they both the parties deposit a margin amount of 15% of the total transaction total transaction amount so here the total transaction amount will be 215 rupees in 200 shares so that comes out to be 21500 rupees so in 21500 rupees 15% of 21500 rupees will be deposited by a and b both of them will deposit the same amount to c c is the custodian he is looking after it and or he sees the broker who is looking after that the deal is completely solved and settled when the date of 1st august 2020 arises so this is what is futures contract so here a and b both the parties have got into a contract that they will come to a settlement that a will sell and b will buy sorry a will buy from b after one year on 1st august 2020 200 shares of uh, tata motors at 215 rupees for this they have deposited both of them have deposited a margin of 15% of the total amount that is 21500 rupees uh, total margin of 21 tw- total margin which is tw- 15% of 21500 rupees from the whole uh, total amount and they have deposited this with the broker that is c so c will take care that whenever the stock price goes up or down from 215 the, because on the on a daily basis the prices of the fu- future rate will keep on fluctuating so in this case let's say for example today is 1st august and on the same day if the contract fluctuates and the current cash market rate increases to by 10 points and it becomes the current market rate becomes 210 rupees then what happens the contract value which is already signed in the morning of let's say 1st august 2019 the contract value has now increased by 10 rupees and since the contract value has increased by 10 rupees then a is making a profit of 10 rupees and b is making a loss of 10 rupees so what will happen the broker will tell b that you need to fill up your bank account or the or the demat account with another 10 rupees per share so 10 rupees into 100 that will be a 1000 rupees b will have to deposit and that will be going into a's account as the gain of 1000 rupees so this is how one complete transaction of futures trade happens so in level 2 and level 3 we will be understanding what uh, are calls that will be covered in level 2 and level 3 will be we'll be covering what are puts so i will give you another example for this so let's take a, a example of let's say yes bank so if we talk about yes bank the current market price of yes bank let's say is 86 rupees and the future price of let's say 6 months is coming out to be 89 rupees okay so this is just a hypothetical example the current market price is 86 rupees the future price of 6 months Six months, so it can be changed to one year, six months, one month, and so on. So future price of six months is eighty nine rupees, for example. Future prices and cash market prices both are uh, extremely volatile, majorly because of the demand and supply. If someone is willing to pay a higher price, why will someone, the other person, not like to sell it at a high price? So that is why it is majorly governed by demand and supply. So talking about uh yes bank if the minimum quantity of shares is let's say 2200 so in futures you always have a lot size 
so lot size will be a defined number of sh shares that you will have to trade a minimum defined number of tra shares that you will have to tra trade so in case of yes bank it is 2200 so if i want to get into this contract the current market price is 86 the future price is 89 rupees so if i purchase a future at let's say 89 rupees of let's say six months so current uh, right now let's say it is uh, 1st of january then 1st of january after six months on 1st of june when six months have passed or let's say 1st of july 1st of july when six months have passed what should be the interest cost interest cost can be simply calculated by 86 into uh, if let's say six percent is the interest six uh, by 100 into we'll uh, divide it by 6 by 12 that is half because we are taking it for half year so if we calculate this we will get the interest that it should be there uh, the that interest should be levied on the future price and the new future price should be including of the interest but here we can see that the future price is more than just the interest so it is mainly because of the demand and supply which is prevalent in the market so now if the current rate is 89 rupees then i'm getting a contract which says that i can i will have to buy i will have to buy the yes bank share from someone else at 89 rupees if i get into a futures contract at the rate of 89 rupees of six months with 2200 shares so if and obviously for this as i told you in the earlier example of tata motors i will have to deposit a uh, 15 percent or 10 percent as margin money with the broker similarly the buy side if i am buying the contract i will also have to deposit and if someone is selling the contract he will also have to have to deposit because so that uh, it is settled in a proper way and there is no problem or miscommunication or any kind of fraud which is happening so this overall this transaction is looked after by the broker so this was a complete trade another example which i gave you of yes bank so when what will happen after six months when the time period is over eventually what will happen the cash market rate and the future price both of them will co coincide and come to a same price on the ex date of expiry so that is what we need to take care so this is usually what happens in the cash market and the future market rate both the rates coincide and come to the same level this is mainly because the time value has expired and since there is no time value slowly as each and every day passes the cash market rate will the future market rate will coincide and um, come to uh, come closer to the current market price and both the prices will become same on the day of the expiry expiry is on the day of the settlement which in case of tata motors was 1st august 2020 and which in case of yes bank as the as i gave you the example was 1st july 20 19 so that is what i wanted to explain and this is what is futures so stay tuned for our next video which will be coming up on calls and what are calls and how to sell calls and all that that is a part of options and that is the level two which i'll be explaining in the next video so keep liking and sharing signing off sidhan goel Hi guys, this is Dan from Finlife and we'll be understanding the payoff diagram in this video of put options. So majorly when a person is buying a put option and when a person is selling a put option, that is the payoff diagram we'll try to understand in this video. So majorly you can see the payoff diagram which is in front of your screen and you already know you must have uh, seen the video earlier video of put options where we told you that when a person is buying a put option, he is expecting the stock price to go down and when a person is selling the option, he is expecting the stock price to go up so when he is expecting the stock price to go down as and when the stock price falls he'll make more and more money so in this chart in this diagram you can see that clearly when the stock price is falling so he has executed a trade on the strike price when the share share price keeps falling down you can see that the line of the profitability is rising continuously that means that as soon as the stock price goes below the premium that he's paid so the strike price minus the premium that the person has paid the person who has bought the put option has paid as soon as the price goes below that level he will start making a money he will start making money for in example in the last case we took the example of let's say 80 rupees a reliance example that we take took took a hyper hypothetical example that if the stock price is at 100 rupees and 
the person has got into a put contract at 80 rupees and there is a 2 rupee premium that he has paid in order to get into the contract and get such an option to trade so he will start making money when the stock prices fall below 78 rupees so as and when the prices keep falling below 78 rupees he will start getting into the profit into profit and start making more and more money when in case the stock price goes in the opposite direction the maximum money that he will lose is the premium that he has paid which is of 2 rupees so that you can see here clearly that he will make a loss of maximum 2 rupees or the premium that he has uh, the buyer of the put option has uh, paid on the other hand now this is this was decoding the person who has bought the put option De now moving on to the other thing when a person has sold a put option so when a person has sold the put option what will happen that the person who has sold the put option he will you can clearly see in the chart here that when the put option has been sold you will see that the right side movement is telling you the share price movement if the share price is increasing or decreasing so you can see that when a put option is there and when the price of the put option will the person was short the put option when the price of that stock will go up so when the stock of the uh, when the price of the stock will increase the person will be able to make the profit of the premium that he has uh, received from the buyer of the put so if the stock price is let's say increasing 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 he will continuously he will be able to make the max maximum profit of the premium that he has received from the buyer of the put contract and in case the stock continuously keeps on falling his loss will massively increase and he will start making a loss more and more as soon as the price falls uh, below the strike strike price so his loss will start majorly his break even point will be the strike price minus the premium that he has received so if the strike price is let's say 80 rupees that we took as an example uh, while explaining put options level 3 so if 80 rupees is the reliance stock price is just a hypothetical example and the strike price was at 80 uh, so and the premium was 2 rupees so 80 rupees minus 2 that is 78 78 is the premium uh, is the break even amount at which uh, the situation is break even and below 80 rupees as and when the stock keeps falling below 80 rupees the person who has short the pull up put option will start making a loss and the person who has bought the put option will start making money because obviously it will be a lucrative deal for the person uh, because he has entered into a contract which says that he can sell the his shares at 80 rupees and the market price is falling continuously continuously so he will still be able to share it sell his shares at 80 rupees and further the person and he will be able to buy it at a lower price in the market so obviously he will exercise whereas a put option the person who has short the put option he is obliged to buy the shares at 80 rupees which was mentioned in the contract earlier when they signed it so this is a payoff diagram for the short put option contract so that is what i wanted to explain in this video i hope you enjoyed it and liked it and everything was pretty clear in this video so stay tuned for the upcoming videos on how to make more money from and how to start making one or two percent returns from uh, shorting options and calls in order to take more strategies and do more strategies to take more and more profit out of the markets so signing off siddhant goel from bill life Hi guys, this is Dan from Phillife and uh, in this video we'll be discussing about how to see the futures and option prices. So for that we can go on to money control website and um, for any stock, any stock particularly you want to see. So for example, we will go on and write down the price uh, with the name of Titan. So here if we write down Titan here, so we'll be able to see that what is the current market price of the stock so the current market price of the stock is coming out to be 1079 rupees per share so if you want to buy this in the cash market you will just give for one particular share you will just give 1079 rupees 20 pesa so you will be able to buy the share and the share will be delivered into your DMAT account within two days moving further if you want to see the futures prices of the stock so we can simply scroll down and we can see that the future price is written here so usually the future price stays higher because 
of if there is one one day in one month a difference of one month in the uh, in the contract so right now today it's 30th of july and there is exactly one month uh, in the expiry that is uh, 29th uh, 29th uh, of august 2019 we can see that there is a difference of approximately 3 rupees in the uh, the cash market rate and the future market rate so the future market rate is coming out to be 1082.95 and the ca cash market rate is coming out to be uh, 1079.20 so this is how you can simply see the future price of any stock which is listed onto the stock exchange so not all the stocks are listed onto the stock exchange uh, in fno market futures and option market only around 220 to 230 stocks are listed in the indian stock exchange in order to see the in order to see the option market you will have to go on to nsindia.com you can even uh, further you can even see it from here itself but on by clicking on the option chain here but um, clicking going on to the nsindia.com website is also very useful and is a very simple way of understanding and seeing so that I'll, i'm going to explain you both the ways how you can see the option prices also so simply you can go on to live markets and click on equity derivatives on the nsc website after clicking on equity derivative go on here and click on on and write down the name of the stock that you wish to see so let's say if i write down titan this is the option option chain if i write down titan so now the option chain for titan has opened up here and i can see the stock price the future uh, the stock price uh, here the um, the the rate of the stock here and further i can see that the call prices are mentioned here and so everything on the left side where the calls are written are the strike prices or the various contracts which are available which you can get into for calls and on the right side you can see that all the contracts which are available for puts which you are you can get into so there are n number of contracts that you can trade so as i told you in the earlier videos also if you've seen the earlier videos on calls and puts or uh, the futures that futures and options and derivative markets is just a mere transactions and trading of contracts it is not the actual delivery of shares which usually happens in the cash markets so only contracts are traded and no physical selling of shares or buying of shares happens in um, in the derivative markets and that is what leads to open interest and volume so we will be discussing it about uh, discussing about that what are open interests and volumes in the future uh, videos so this is how you can see the prices of any stocks and you can even see the expiries here so we have three months expiries of stocks for, for that is in titan we can see 29th august 2019 26th september 2019 and 31st october if you click on 26 september you will even be able to see that the trading volume has also reduced very uh, much and not not a lot of activity is there so the higher the activity even gives you more insight whether uh, the stock will be able to breach a certain level or whether a stock will will uh, stay above a certain level so that is also a great insight that you can get by understanding open interest and volumes and linking it with the prices of of the uh, contracts various contracts of calls calls and puts this is what will help you understand how much money you can make and how uh, how you can make around one and a half to two percent on a monthly basis that we cover up usually in our uh, different course on futures and options uh, uh, futures and options course so moving further i i think you can see uh, i'll just give you another example so for example let's say we can write down yes bank here and if we click on yes bank you will be able to see so clicking on yes bank will tell you and the new option chain of yes bank will be opened up here so this is the option chain of uh, yes bank on the left side you can see all the cool calls on the put on the right side you can see all the puts you can even see demarcation of yellow color and white color on the screen that is telling you whether the stock is uh, in the money call or out of money call so that we'll be discussing on later on uh, that what do you mean by in the money call and out of money call if you see in our level 2 videos on calls you will be able to understand that and if you've seen our uh, 
level 3 videos on puts then you will be able to understand what uh, in the money and out of money calls are so i highly recommend you that uh, watch those videos so, so that you get a good idea about what i'm talking about so that is what i wanted to explain in this video that how you can start seeing uh, what uh, from where you can start seeing the futures prices and the call prices and the put prices of various stocks so coming on to the option chain from on the money control website so this is the option chain this is how it looks on money control website so you can see here that all the, it is similar to what the what i showed you on the uh, nsca website so strike prices are mentioned in the between on the left side all the calls are mentioned on the right side all the puts are mentioned and on the extreme left all the last traded prices are mentioned the main benefit on uh, the nse website is that you get both the ask prices and the bid prices so at what price you can buy and what price you can sell immediately at the market rate that is also available here that is why this website is excellent to watch the stock market prices or uh, of the options and options and futures for stocks majorly uh, we majorly we use a mixture of calls puts and futures in order to yield around one and a half to two percent returns on a monthly basis and a consistent basis or from stocks and uh, the ind indices secondly i will even like to show you nifty here because nifty has weekly expiries so you will be able to see so we if we click here you will be able to see that every thursday nifty has got an expiry so here also you can see that it is first august written so on first august you can see here that first august is a first august is a thursday so every thursday you can see that there is a weekly expiry on nifty and bank nifty so if you wish so weekly for expiry also i like to explain here that the contracts all the contracts will be ending on that thursday so as i have told you earlier in the earlier videos that usually monthly expiries are all the contracts get expired or settled on the last thursday of every month so that is what usually happens so in weekly expiry you can see here if i change the prices for example if we see that for 11,150 call price is coming out to be the buy price if I want to buy it right now I can buy it at 23.45 and if I want to sell it I can sell it at 23.20 if I change this to let's say a monthly expiry of 29th August we can see here that the prices have now changed of 11,000 1150 uh, 100, 11, rupees now it has increased to 135.70 and 129.05 so if i now want to buy it i'll be able to buy it at 135.70 if i want to sell it i can sell it at 129.05 so the major difference has come in here is majorly because of the time value so within one month we can see that these contracts all the prices of these contracts will come down to zero that is majorly because all the time value which is stored in these uh, out of money calls right now will expire and will get zero exhausted and will get zero similarly this also happens in futures when the cash market price and the future market price you can see they collide and come up uh, to the same level as the expiry closes this majorly happens because the time value is eroded so i've already exp explained this in the level one video if you've not seen it i highly encourage you to see that video so that you get a deep insight about how this functions and eventually you will be able to see how money is also made from uh, selling or buying puts and calls so that is what i wanted to explain in this video i hope you guys enjoyed this and got a de decent insight that how you can see basic futures and options prices of various stocks and indices signing off siddhant goel from phil life I hope you keep watching the other videos also. Hi guys, welcome to this video lecture on call options particularly. This is the level 2 which we'll be discussing here. So majorly we've discussed cash markets and the futures markets already uh, level 0 and level 1. So now we'll be discussing about contracts and derivative contracts in the call market and in the option market. So majorly there are two things in options which are calls and puts. Calls means buyer and people who are expecting the buyer of the call option is expecting that the stock price will go up and he will make profit whereas in puts the buyer of the put option expects the markets to go down or the stock prices to go down and then he'll make profit 
so let's move on and let's talk about level 2 which is calls so majorly in any derivatives if you talk about derivatives there is a contract which is signed between the buyer and the seller uh we have already discussed this in the futures uh, future contracts which we talked about uh, what is a contract and how contracts are made and what is written in the contract similarly we will talk about it in this video also so taking a example of let's say titan titan let's say if it's trading at 1000 rupees is the current market price of titan and we want to make or we want to do a call contract on it so simply what we'll do is we'll find a person who is willing to sign a contract with us majorly we get a lot of deals like this online uh, or when we are trading in the option market so majorly let's say there are two people a and b so if a is interested in buying a call option and b is selling a call option so mutually they will decide or the whatever the premiums or the prices that you are getting on your platform or with your broker mutually what will happen is uh, it will be simply written down on a contract so if you see there is a contract on contract it will be written the date on which the expiry will happen usually it is the thursday of last month so if we talk about one one month contract of let's say titan so last day for example let's take if let's say 29th of any month is the last day last thursday so 29th the contract will expire that is the date on which the settlement will happen and the contract will get over or the settlement date secondly the price will be written at which price which strike price the uh, contract will happen so if the current market price is let's say 1000 rupees at which price the contract will happen it can happen at 1200 it can happen at 1000 it can happen at 1100 it can happen at 800 so there are n number of contracts which are available so let's say for in the, for example in this we'll take it as 1200 rupees contract so a tells b in this contract that i will buy the stock from you at 1200 rupees after one month and on the last thursday of the month so let's say today is 1st august and on 29th august is the last thursday and b a that is the expiration date so the contract is for one month and a is saying that i will be willing to buy the stock from you at 1200 rupees so and the current market price is 1000 rupees so b tells a that if you wish to buy it at 1200 rupees okay that is no problem but for this option that the option that i am giving you to buy the stock at 1200 rupees after one month i will charge you a premium of 4 rupees and if you don't buy this from me at 1200 rupees then this these 4 rupees are mine and b won't return this 4 rupees to a A says that's fine, no problem. I I wish to get into the contract, and they sign a contract wherein the date is written on which the deal will happen, the strike price is mentioned, and the premium is mentioned. That is four rupees, which A has given to B as a security money. As a buyer, A is bound to just give four rupees for the contract. whereas as a seller b is bound to give 15% of the complete contract so let's say the lot size or the minimum number of shares which are being traded here are 100 for titan so if 100 is the lot size so the total contract deal will be 1200 that is the strike price into 100 uh, the number of shares so overall the contract deal is deal will be 120000 rupees So, if the overall contract deal is one lakh twenty thousand rupees, B will have to deposit a margin of fifteen percent in order to when he is the seller. So, sellers have to in calls and options, sellers have to deposit a fifteen percent margin of the whole contract deal. Whereas buyers of the option, that is A in this case, just have to deposit the premium because that is the maximum they can lose. Four rupees is the maximum that A can lose, whereas the seller of the option in this case, which is B, can lose as much as the stock goes up. So if the stock, let's say, closes at thirteen hundred rupees, okay, if the clo- stock closes at thirteen hundred rupees, then A will definitely exercise the option and uh, buy his shares from at the rate of twelve hundred rupees, because if he buys this at twelve hundred rupees. Uh, and that is and the market rate is 1300 rupees he will be making he will be making a profit of 100 rupees per share so that is the profit that he will be making whereas b will be losing b has already got 4 rupees which are with b and b will be losing 96 rupees per share so loss of b is unlimited here so if the stock goes up to 1800 rupees then another 500 rupees loss will be added to b which 
we will have to continuously give it to the broker as mark to margin which we discussed in the last video also of futures so as and when the call option uh, contract and if a b or a if b is losing the seller of the contract is losing he will continuously have to mark up to margin mark up to margin is if 15% is deposited and let's say uh, 5% of that is eroded he will again have to put in 5% so that uh, 15% level of 15% is maintained with the broker so that is why sellers of options can have unlimited losses well as buyers of options have limited losses till zero so this is a contract wherein the stock closes at 1300 rupees taking another example if the stock closes at let's say 1000 rupees so this is second case if the stock closes at 1000 rupees a will not exercise the option and a will not buy it from b at 1200 rupees because firstly a has got the right and no obligation because he is the buyer of the option and if the market price is 1000 rupees a will not buy it from b at 1200 rupees because he is simply getting it at a cheaper price in the market so he won't exercise the option and he will forego his 4 rupees that he paid earlier which is written in the contract that he will forego so this is what is how a contract call option works so majorly buyers the if you google it the definition that you will get will be buyer of a call option or buyer of any option has the right but not the obligation to fulfill the contract whereas the seller of the contract has the obligation to fulfill the contract whenever the buyer is exercising the contract so this is what i wanted to explain so in this case a is the buyer of the contract and b is the seller of the contract i'm talking about the contract here a is the buyer of the contract and b is the seller of the contract whereas whereas if you talk about whereas if you talk about this you can see that simply b is the buyer b is the seller of the contract and a is the buyer of the contract whereas when the date of expiration comes b will have to sell the shares also to a and a will have to buy the shares if a plans to exercise the option so this is what i wanted to explain in this video of calls so that you have a clear understanding further i'll be making a video on this so that you can understand the practical analysis and we'll be analyzing the complete option chain of calls and put so that you can understand how it works and what kind of different options are available there in the markets so that's about it for level 2 i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, liked it i'll see you in the next video coming up on calls and uh, options hi guys this is dan from fill life and today we'll be talking about how to make a payoff diagram and how to understand a payoff diagram for a long call and a short call the same kind of diagram you must have seen in the last video which we made for the level 2 of calls so let's get started with it and understand it so majorly you can see this chart in front of you which says a, which is which is a long call chart so in this chart you can simply understand that that the difference here the line which is going up is telling you the magnitude of profit that you can make the line going down can tell you the maximum kind of loss that you can make and uh, the line going on the right side is telling you if the share price increases how will it impact your profitability statement so moving on we can understand if the share price is continuously increasing and going rightwards as shown in this figure you can see that the break even point will be hit which is a uh, addition of the strike price plus the premium that the buyer of the call option has paid so in case the strike the share price goes above the break even point which is i told you earlier is the strike price in addition to the premium that the call per, uh, the call buyer of the call option has paid if the share price goes above that level then after that the person who has done the call long will start making a profit and as much as the share price rises more the profit will the person make the maximum loss here we can see in this chart will be the maximum premium which is paid by the person who has longed the call so in this case the maximum profit will be maximum loss can be just the premium amount so if the strike price if the stock closes anywhere below the strike price it will be a complete loss of the premium for the person who has longed the call and if it closes between the break even point and the strike price then the total amount that the the total amount which is more than the strike price will be the gain 
and that will be subtracted from the premium that the person has uh, paid that will be the loss so in this case you can clearly see how much loss the person will make in case uh, the stock price closes between the strike price and the break even point so this is a simple payoff diagram to see a long call now similarly we will be understanding how uh, how to make a payoff diagram or how to understand a payoff diagram of the call short short call so in this chart also you can see simply the upward movement is telling us the maximum profit that a person can make who has short the call and the maximum loss that he can make and uh, the rightward movement is telling us the share price movement so in this chart we can clearly see if the stock price is continuously increasing and the person who has made uh, a short call or is short on a call then his losses will continuously keep on increasing because in case of shorting a call the person who short the call has the possibility of making unlimited losses so unlimited losses means as and when the stock price keeps on continuously increasing what will happen the person will keep on making more and more loss in comparison to the break even point so in this case the break even point for the person who has short the call will be the strike price in addition to the premium that he has received so let's say if the strike price is 1000 rupees and the premium that he has received is 4 rupees then if the stock price starts moving up more than 100 1004 then he will start incurring a loss here so this is what i wanted to explain in the payoff diagram of a call, short call so this is similar to uh, this chart is also similar to the long call option chart but the only thing is that this is inverted so that is what i wanted to explain in this chart in the next video, we'll be understanding how to see the call options and how to see the various kinds of contracts that are available on uh, Nifty and majorly how to see them practically from the online websites. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay connected for the next video. Hi guys, this is Zan from Phil Life, and in this video, we'll be discussing about put options. Majorly, we have still till now we have covered what is level zero, that is the cash market, level one, that is the futures market, level two, which was the calls market, which is a part of options. So options has two things: calls and puts. Calls rise when the market is rising, and puts the value of the puts rise when the market is falling. This we have already discussed in the last video also, but and we have covered up calls in the last videos and about calls that was level 2 in this video we will be covering about level 3 that is puts so majorly lot of people are afraid of calls and puts but we try to serve you in a very simple way and try to teach you that you so that you can understand and start making money out of it so overall the main purpose of training you on options is that you can start making money out of it and you can either by buying calls or puts or either by selling calls or puts so that is the main purpose of these videos and training and the course that you are doing if you are not able to make money out of this course it is not i i don't say that it is not beneficial but still it is not worth it then you should be able to make money out of the course and you should recover all the fees that you've paid for the course because these are things these are strategies which can actually help you out and there will be some strategies coming in uh, in the follow-up videos that will teach you how you can make around one to two percent returns every month provided you manage your risk properly so moving further let's talk about puts so there is let's say there is a person a and b and let's say for example we are taking reliance as an example and um, the price of reliance is let's say 100 rupees for just this is just an, a hypothetical example and we'll be doing practical stuff in the coming video just just to explain you so talking about reliance if reliance is the stock price current market price of reliance is 100 rupees and a wishes in, to get into a contract with b and a put contract so for example, let's say A expects the market to go down and A expects the reliance to go down particularly. So A gets into a contract with B and A says that I wish to get into a contract with you wherein I will uh, sell you reliance at 80 rupees. Right now the current, current market price is let's say 100 rupees and I will sell you at 80 rupees. B tells A that why will I, um, why will I buy it at 80 rupees if the current market price is at 100 rupees. I, I do not wish to buy it at 80 rupees. A sells, A tells then, um, okay, give me one month's time. If in one month, A, if in one month the stock of Reliance stays above 80 rupees, obviously, 
then uh, you you keep the shares so overall i will be giving you a will be giving a premium of let's say 2 rupees to b so a is giving a premium to b for giving this contract giving this option of a contract and getting into the contract because a tells b that he will sell the shares at 80 rupees after one month to b and b will buy the shares so b in either in this case is obliged to buy uh, shares from a in case a exercises it on the day of settlement so similarly in the in this contract also three things will be written mainly the uh, the strike price at which the deal will happen which is 80 rupees in this case the one one month time period that is the last third day of every month usually uh, and then the premium amount which is paid that is 2 rupees further b will also have to deposit a 15 percent margin with the broker so that this deal is executed properly and there is no problem and b will have to do a mark to margin also which i told you uh, in the earlier videos also in case b starts suffering a loss so uh, in this case moving further we'll understand how this will work so majorly in case this is the whole contract that a and b will get into so in case the stock let's say closes at 90 rupees if the stock closes at 90 rupees at the end of the month what will happen will do you think a will uh, buy the share uh, a will sell the shares at 80 rupees if the market rate is 90 rupees of course no because if the market rate is 90 rupees and the contract says that a has to sell the shares at 80 rupees he will not sell it because if the market rate is 90 rupees he would prefer selling it in the market so he would say he would tell b that you can keep my 2 rupees the premium that i gave and uh, i don't want to exercise it further you just keep 2 rupees and i am out of the trade so here in this case if the market closes at 90 rupees b will make a profit of 2 rupees per share and a will make a loss of 2 rupees per share so a is the buyer of the contract put contract and b is the seller of the contract so a, here you can see a made a limited loss of 2 rupees and b made a limited profit of 2 rupees though the stock fell from 100 to 90 and still the only profit and loss which was uh, which was transferring hands was only 2 rupees in in the other case let's say if the stock closed closes at 70 rupees or yeah if the stock closes at 70 rupees what will happen now a will say that yes i wish to sell this uh, my shares at 80 rupees which was promised on the day we signed the contract at 80 rupees since the market price is 70 rupees a will sell his shares at 80 rupees the contract premium was completely complete at 2 rupees so overall a is selling his shares at 80 rupees and the market rate is 70 rupees so in case in this case what will happen if a wants to get into the same situation he will sell his shares at 80 rupees and rebuy the shares at 70 rupees from the market so eventually he will make a profit of 10 rupees in that situation plus he has paid 2 rupee premium a premium of 2 rupees that will be subtracted so overall a will make a profit of 8 rupees per share in this trade by just investing 2 rupees so that's a massive profit of approximately 400 percent or overall his money has increased massively so these are two parameters which i wanted to tell you in the put contract so this is how a put contract works so we will be understanding the payoff diagrams also of the put contract so that you get a deeper understanding of how put works so keep this in mind that in a put contract a and b if there are two people and a is the buyer of the contract minded that a is the buyer of the contract but on the day of the expiry he will be selling his shares to b a is buying the contract but on the date of expiry he will be selling his shares to b and b will be obliged to buy the shares from a so that is what is very important in a put contract and this is absolutely opposite of what happens in a call contract in a call contract a will be buying the shares from b and b will be selling the shares and in a put contract i'm repeating again a will be selling the shares to b and b will be obliged to buy the shares so this is what is a put contract which i wanted to explain you 
here so you can do the permutation combinations and maybe try it out as an example also that how it works so that is what i wanted to explain in this video and next video will be coming up on uh, the pair of diagrams of puts so that you understand it pretty well and everything is crystal clear for you to make any further trades in the markets so that's about it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and the concept was very clear so signing off siddhant goel from finlife Hi guys, this is Dan from Finlife, and we will be understanding the payoff diagram in this video of put options. So, majorly, when a person is buying a put option and when a person is selling a put option, that is the payoff diagram we will try to understand in this video. So, majorly, you can see the payoff diagram which is in front of your screen, and you already know you must have uh, seen the video earlier video of put options where we told you that when a person is buying a put option, he is expecting the stock price to go down, and when a person is selling the option. he is expecting the stock price to go up so when he is expecting the, the stock price to go down as and when the stock price falls he'll make more and more money so in this chart in this diagram you can see that clearly when the stock price is falling so he has executed a trade on the strike price when the share share price keeps falling down you can see that the line of the profitability is rising continuously that means that as soon as the stock price goes below the premium that he's paid so the strike price minus the premium that the person has paid the person who has bought the put option has paid as soon as the price goes below that level he will start making a money he will start making money for in example in the last case we took the example of let's say 80 rupees a uh, reliance example that we take took took a hyper hypothetical example that if the stock price is at 100 rupees and the person has got into a put contract at 80 rupees and there is a 2 rupee premium that he has paid in order to get into the contract and get such a option to trade so he will start making money when the stock prices fall below 78 rupees so as and when the prices keep falling below 78 rupees he will start getting into the profit into profit and start making more and more money when in case the stock price goes in the opposite direction the maximum money that he will lose is the premium that he has paid which is of 2 rupees so that you can see here clearly that he will make a loss of maximum 2 rupees or the premium that he has uh, the buyer of the put option has uh, paid on the other hand now this is this was decoding the person who has bought the put option Dec now moving on to the other thing when a person has sold a put option so when a person has sold the put option what will happen that the person who has sold the put option he will you can clearly see in the chart here that when the put option has been sold you will see that the right side movement is telling you the share price movement if the share price is increasing or decreasing so you can see that when a put option is there and when the price of the put option will the person who has short the put option when the price of that stock will go up so when the stock of the, when the price of the stock will increase the person will be able to make the profit of the premium that he has received from the buyer of the put so if the stock price is let's say increasing 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 he will continuously he will be able to make the max maximum profit of the premium that he has received from the buyer of the put contract and in case the stock continuously keeps on falling his loss will massively increase and he will start making a loss more and more as soon as the price falls uh, below the strike strike price so his loss will start majorly his break even point will be the strike price minus the premium that he has received so if the strike price is let's say 80 rupees that we took as an example uh, while explaining put options level 3 so if 80 is rupees is the reliance uh, stock price is just an hypothetical example and the strike price was at 80 uh, so and the premium was 2 rupees so 80 rupees minus 2 that is 78 78 is the premium uh, is the break even amount at which uh, 
the situation is break even and below 80 rupees as and when the stock keeps falling below 80 rupees the person who has short the pull op- put option will start making a loss and the person who has bought the put option will start making money because obviously it will be a lucrative deal for the person uh, because he has entered into a contract which says that he can sell the his shares at 80 rupees and the market price is falling continuously continuously so he will still be able to share it sell his shares at 80 rupees and further the person and he will be able to buy it at a lower price in the market so obviously he will exercise whereas a put option the person who has short the put option he is obliged to buy the shares at 80 rupees which was mentioned in the contract earlier when they signed it so this is a payoff diagram for the short put option contract so that is what i wanted to explain in this video i hope you enjoyed it and liked it and everything was pretty clear in this video so stay tuned for the upcoming videos on how to make more money from and how to start making one or two percent returns from uh, shorting options and calls in order to take more strategies and do more strategies to take more and more profit out of the markets so signing off siddhant goel from pin life Hi guys, welcome back to this video and we'll be discussing about open interest, how to see open interest and a basic kind of analysis what you can do by looking at open interest. So let's get started with it. So majorly this is the option chain of Nifty and you can see all the calls on the left side and all the puts on the right side. So majorly if you see here we can see the number of contracts traded here. So the more number of contracts or the more number of open interest if you see in any call you can expect that the stock won't go below, above that level. In case of calls that means most of the people most of the institutions and professionals are selling those open interest calls so in this case if we see it is at 4897 uh, at the call of 9 11200 so 11200 we are not expecting that the stock price will go up above 11200 till 5th September 2019 so that is what we can expect from this and similarly in case of puts if we see we are not expecting it to go below uh, 11,000 by 5th September 2019 that is because the there is a massive open interest build up of 17,000 till till September 5th so that is what we can infer from open interest the change in open interest is also very important for analysis and it tells us how many new contracts are being opened I hope till now you must have seen the open interest and the volume video so that you must have got a good idea that what is open interest and how does it affect and what how what is open interest build up and short build up and short covering and all that so Talking about in this video, the volumes are simply telling you the number of contracts traded. So the volume is not really telling you much about the stock, but the open interest and number of open interest, uh, open new open interest contracts which have been opened tell you that how many sellers are active on to, uh, on today's date. So if more number of open interest is increasing, for in this case, if 1400 contracts have been opened, new open contracts have been opened in uh, on the strike price of 11200 then we can see here that traders are active and they are still expecting that the market won't reach 11200 so if there is a high open interest on any calls we can expect that the market won't go above that level in case of op- out of money calls only and in case of out of money puts we don't expect the market to fall below that level because institutions and professional buyers professional uh, option writers are have sold the calls or puts for that uh, strike price so that is what i wanted to explain in this video this is a short and crisp video of viewing and analyzing open interest on a very small basis to find out a range for that you can so that you can sell off your calls and puts so that's about it for this video if you enjoyed it uh, i hope i hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for upcoming videos hi guys welcome back to this video and in this video we'll be discussing and seeing how to see trades and what kind of trades can we do and strategies that we can take in order to make money so let's get started with it going on to nsc india website so they've just made or changed uh, migrating to a new website so this is the beta version if you want you can go to option chain here here you can click on option chain and select the option chain from where you can see particularly for nifty what are the 
trades which are available and what are the prices of the calls and puts coming in so i'll just make this full screen so that you can see more and uh, so this is the option chain so these are the number of contracts that are being traded earlier it was coming into the multi with the multiplication of the option lot size that is 75 so this open interest was earlier multiplied by 75 and now it is coming in contract number of contracts traded and not the total number of contracts multiplied by the number of shares in each contract so now it is only the number of contracts so seeing here so this is for the expiry of 29th august but we'll just check out these are for weekly expiries we'll just go on to 26 september and see what kind of trades that we can get here so usually it is said that i'll just open up notepad notepad so usually it is said that if you are able to make if you are able to make approximately uh, approximately if you are getting a you are able to sell a pair for more than 400 rupees more than 400 then it is a wonderful trade and you can pick up that trade so more than 400 rupees for the same for the same strike price so in order to understand this even in a in a better way what we can do is so for here what we do is we just try to calculate how much premium are we getting if we sell a in the atm at the money call for 11100 so the total premium that we will get here is firstly for calls we will get approximately 208.45 that is this amount okay and for puts we will get approximately this amount in case we sell it 173.65 173.65 170 173.65 so the total money that we can we are expecting here will be 208.45 plus 173.65 this is the total premium that we are getting if we sell both both the call and the put for the same strike price of 11100 so if the market stays at 11100 we will be getting the premium complete premium of 380 rupees approximately but it is always advisable that you should make this trade when the total premium is more than 400 for one month approximately for one month or 30 days so then you should go for this trade so in case if i'm getting this trade and in case if i'm getting this amount this money and let's say the puts are let's say around 450 rupees or something then i should go this trade, go for this trade and sell one call and sell one put for the same strike price and wait it out when the strike when the amount of both calls and puts decreases we can rebuy it and um, book our profits it might be a situation wherein if the market goes up the prices of the call will rise but eventually the prices of the puts will fall also so what will happen you will be making a loss in one one side and on the other side you will be making more profit so that will be a situation how you can make more money out of it so this is one trade where you can do and this is one good strategy where you can make money going on to same pay this is a pair trade and going on to another exp for understanding for a weekly expiry what we can do is going on to weekly expiry let's say where the expiry is for one week so for 5th september if i'm getting a premium of more than let's say 150 160 or 170 rupees then i can go for a pair trade for weekly weekly expiry expiry pi expiry so for 5th september expiry 2019 expiry if i want i can go on to let's say taking the same case of 11100 calls atm calls so it is coming out to be 111.60 111.60 and puts will be puts will be approximately 104. 104.75 104 approximately 0. 0.00 so the total premium that i'm fetching is approximately 111.60 plus 104 so that is 215 premium that is a good amount so i'm getting 215 approximately approximately and if i'm getting more than let's say more than 180 160 to 180 premium amount 
in premium then i can sell both both call and puts so this is a good strategy if you want to make money on a weekly expiry and what you can do is you've sold it let's say at 215 rebuy it at around 160 or 150 so you will be able to make approximately if you be rebuy it at let's say 160 rupees and minus 215 rupees what you are getting here so you will be able to make approximately 40 55 rupees so if we calculate it so you will be able to make 55 into 75 rupees that is 4120 rupees by investment of approximately 160000 rupees on nifty that is a 2.5% return that is a 2.5% return within a week or 10 days so that's the kind of returns that you can make on this trade so this is this was a pair trade which i wanted to tell for weekly expiry and monthly expiries and if for monthly expiries if you are getting more than 400 points uh, by selling a uh, atm ATM call or both out of money calls then you can make good amount of money and for weekly expiries if you are able to get more than 160 or 170 premium by selling a call and put then you should you can go for it and you can make good money on that also so that is what I wanted to explain in this video I hope you enjoyed it we'll be coming up with more videos on trading strategies stay tuned for the next lecture hi guys welcome back to this video in this video we'll be discussing about how to make payoff diagrams for futures and options majorly in a normal chart if you see the charts look something like this which is represented on the screen but in case of futures and options we just have to extend this line south southwards so if we check out this chart we can see that the line moving north northwards shows us the profitability statement that how much profit that the person can make uh, why, when he's done the trades the line moving southwards will tell us the number uh, number of uh, the amount of loss that the person can make and the line moving on moving towards the right tells us the stock price movement so if the stock price is increasing the the line will move to more towards rightwards and the price is going up and if the stock price is falling it will be represented by the line going on the left line going on the left left side so in this case if you want to plot a simple chart for a futures uh, contract where we bought the futures it is similar to the chart that we bought a stock so if you bought a stock or bought a future the chart will be somewhat like this representing that the price at which we have purchased the stock or the future contract and if the stock price continuously keeps on rising how much profit that we'll make and if the stock price falls down and goes down how much loss that we'll make so this is a long futures contract similarly if you want to see a short futures contract the chart will be like this wherein we'll see if the stock is falling we'll see that how much profit is being made in the contract and if the stock is rising how much loss you will be making in case you have short the futures contract so this is a simple payoff diagram for a long future contract and a short futures contract now moving further we have calls which is the level two for us that we've discussed so earlier we discussed level one of futures contract now level two payoff diagrams for calls so in case of a call contract we have a similar chart which is showing us uh, profitability loss and the stock price movement so in case we are longing a call we are buying a call the chart will be somewhat like this representing firstly the strike price which is there secondly the premium that the person has paid which is represented by this or we can add the premium to the strike price telling us the break even point for the person who's bought the call option so if you bought the call option it tells you that how much money will you will make if the stock price moves above the uh, if the stock price keeps rising and moves above the break even point and as soon as the price will keep on rising above the break even point on the day of expiry or before the expiry the the price will start increasing of the call and the person will make more and more money so this will be re represented here and this is a payoff diagram for the call i hope it is uh, crystal clear moving further now the next is a short call so the short call will be represented in a, in this way which will be representing if the st stock price continuously keeps on falling how much money that the person will uh, make or lose so the maximum profit will be just of the premium amount so this chart is simply representing that how much money can be made if the stock price since we have short the call we are expecting that the market to fall down or stay above a certain level so if we have short the call let's say of uh, 
80 rupees for a particular stock and the current stock price is 60 rupees so we are not expecting the stock to go above 80 and expire below 80 so if the stock price expires below 80 we will make the complete amount of premium so that is a short call and in this chart also price increase will be represented by the rightward movement price decrease will be uh, represented by the leftward movement in the chart and if the stock price expires below the strike price then the complete money will be made in case of calls Moving further in the third chart, the, in the level 3 will be puts. So in case of a put contract, we will see that how much money will be make, made in case the stock price uh, is falling. So put means that you are expecting that, uh, that the stock will be, you will start making money when the put, when the stock price keeps falling down. So if the stock price keeps falling down, you will see that as and when more, more and more the stock price is falling down, you the chart is showing that more and more profit will keep on increasing if the stock price closes above the strike price there will be the loss of the premium amount which has been paid by the buyer of the put so this is a put contract now the last chart which is uh, 3.2 level 3.2 which tells us a payoff diagram for the short put contract so short put the person is expecting that the market will go market will go up so where we are expecting the short short put contract we will be expecting that the market will go up so in this case the chart will be looking somewhat like this and what will happen when the stock price will keep on rising the person will make a maximum profit of the premium that he has uh, he has received so he has sold the contract and he has received some premium while selling the contract so he will be making the maximum profit of selling the contract and in this case the rightward movement will show you how much profit how much stock price is rising or falling and more and more loss will be made if you see more and more loss will be made if the stock price continuously keeps on falling down so he has short the put contract so he is expecting the market to rise so if the stock continuously keeps on falling he will make more and more losses so this is a payoff diagram for a put contract so we can mix up two or three trades and further make payoff diagrams also so if you let's say short one contract call contract and short one put contract then you have made of the same uh, strike price then it will be a different kind of payoff diagrams so we are not discussing that right now in this video which will be coming up in the future videos so that's about it for this video for payoff diagrams i hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the upcoming lectures on other videos other Hi guys, this is Siddhant from Phil Life and in this video we will be understanding what is written in a call contract and what is written in a put contract. So we will try to differentiate it clearly and try to understand what is written in each of the contracts. So talking about the call contract first, majorly the strike price is written at which the deal will happen and similarly in the put contract also the same thing is written. The margins are written and the premium that is being paid for both the trades that is written in both the sides the call contract also and the put contract also the major difference where come what comes in here is that in a call contract a is the person a is the person who will be buying the shares from b and b will be selling the shares whereas in the put contract this is written that a will be selling the shares to b and b is obliged to buy the shares from a in both the cases, B is the person who has sold the contract. Mind it that B has sold the contract and in case of call options, B will sell the shares on the day of expiry and in the put contract, B will buy the shares on the day of expiry. In case of uh, call contract, A will be buying the shares and in case of uh, put contract, A will be selling the shares to B and B will be buying the contract. So this is what I wanted to explain you how this thing works and how uh, both the contracts are and what are the differences between both the contracts. So and with this we will move further and try to understand and decode the whole call the what are call options and what are put options in the few further videos. So stay tuned for the next videos.